message of grace is brought to you by Christian people who believe the Bible to be the Word of God and who appreciate its power and authority. Within the pages of the Bible itself, there is a God-given design for its study. Rightly dividing the Word of Truth is the key to understanding the Bible. We're glad you've joined us for another interesting look into God's infallible book as Richard Jordan, President of Grace School of the Bible, presents another in a series of messages designed to help you understand and enjoy the Bible. Let's join them now. We're glad you've tuned in again with us today and we want to welcome you to another Bible study. Hope you'll get a Bible and uh, sit before the television and, and study out of the Word of God with us. Get a King James Bible and sit there and maybe get a pad to write notes on. Sometime we kind of go a little fast. I'll draw some charts on the board. You maybe could copy them down or something. But anything that would aid you in understanding the Word of God is profitable for your life. The Christ, Christian life is, is based on a, on a clear understanding of what God is doing. You see, if you understand what God's doing, then you know how to do the will of God. Sometimes people get this idea that the will of God is so difficult to understand. You know, wh where does God want me at 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon? And what should I be wearing? And wh wh how should I be walking? And what should I eat? And that isn't, that isn't the issue at all. You see, if you'll find out what God's doing, get in His Word and understand what God's doing today, and then go do that. Go do what God's doing. And when you do that, you know what you'll be doing? You'll be doing the will of God. You'll be doing the work of God. But my friend, your Christian life won't operate on the basis of ignorance. It just won't work that way. And you say, well, preacher, I'm not sure I'm a Christian. Well, you know, I'm glad you're listening too. I'm glad you're watching. Because you're going to see as we study today that the Word of God is not an inscrutable, unfathomable, mystical book. Rather, it's a book. It's God's book. And it's been given to us and God gave us a prescribed way to study it that if we'll study it, we can understand it. You're going to see in the next half hour or so, a little less, how to understand the Word of God from the Word of God. And you're going to see the difference between religion with its do's and its don'ts and its perform and its quits and let's go of and hold on to and touch not, taste not, do this. The difference between religion and the Bible. And I hope it will be attractive to you. I hope you'll understand something of it. And that you'd understand that the great need you have is to trust the author of this book, the one that died at Calvary to pay for your sins and was raised again to give you everlasting life. So I'm glad if, you're not, if you don't know for sure you're a Christian today that you're listening too. But I want you to understand and I want my Christian friends to understand that Christian life won't operate on the basis of ignorance. It won't operate on the basis of religious tradition or religious tyranny. It operates only on an intelligent understanding of God's revelation to us in His Word. Now that's why Paul, writing to the young pastor at the church at Ephesus, says in 2 Timothy 2.15, and I want you to look at this verse, study, get that? Study, not just glance, not just devotional life, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. What? Rightly dividing the word of truth. Now that's important. Rightly dividing the word of truth. My friend, the word of God, it's all for us. Okay? But it's not all to us. Nor is it all about us. God has other people in His programs than just you and me. And the, the issue in rightly dividing the Word is to identify what's for us and what's to us. What's for our admonition and learning and what's about what God's doing today in the dispensation of grace. Now you need to understand this principle of rightly dividing the Word of God. Making the distinctions that God makes in His Word. And you know there, there, everybody that studies the Bible 
rightly divides it in some way. They divide it in some way. When he says rightly divide it, the assumption is he doesn't just say divide it. He says rightly divide it. If, you, if you, you're commanded to rightly divide it, then obviously you might wrongly divide it. And so uh, this is the principle of dispensational Bible study. So, you, you know, I, I think, and I think, well, if I'm to rightly divide it, that means it might be wrongly divided. I don't want to do it wrong. I want to do it right. So how can I decide I've done it right? How can I know how the right way to divide and make the distinctions in God's Word that are there? Well, I think about, I thought about that one day and I said, well, I know who to ask. I think, who can I ask? Can I go to Dr. So-and-so or Dr. So-and-so, Dr. Hodge, Dr. Strong, Dr. Dabney, Dr. Schofield, Dr. Larkin? Who do I go to? It dawned on me one day that I ought to go to the guy that told me to do it. Have you, have you ever done that? Somebody says, well, I think you ought to do so-and-so. and say, okay, you, you're a good man for it. If Paul tells you to rightly divide the word of truth, who you right ought to tell you how? Well, I'd say, hey, Paul, if you're, if, you're, if you're so smart, you say, do it. How do you do it? And you know, when you ask Paul how to do it, he'll tell you. Look at this Ephesians chapter number 2. In Ephesians chapter number 2, the Apostle Paul gives his perspective on how to rightly divide the word of truth, how God's dealings with man are laid out. Notice it. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 11. Wherefore remember that ye being in, underline it, time past, Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Notice there in verse 11, Wherefore remember that ye being in time past. Now look up here. There is a time period in God's Word that He calls time past. And there is a basic distinction that makes up time past. Look back at the verse there. Wherefore remember that ye being in time past, Gentiles in the flesh who are called what? Uncircumcision. By that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. Now look at here. There is a, in time past, the basic characteristic of what's going on back there is that there's a division. And the division is between some people that are called the circumcision on the one hand and the uncircumcision on the other hand. So when you find that division, that distinction between the circumcision and the uncircumcision, when you find God's dealings with men on the basis of the circumcision and on the basis of the uncircumcision and there being a difference between that, the, the difference between the circumcision and the flesh made by hands and uncircumcised people, when that's the basis of God's dealings, you know where you are? You are in, <coughs> excuse me, time past. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, how do I know that? I know that because Ephesians chapter number 2, verse number 11 and 12 told me that. I don't have to say, well, I know that because Brother Rick said that. I saw him on TV and he said it. No, 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 no. You understand that and know that because God Almighty's Word tells you that time past is marked by the division in God's dealings with men between the circumcision and the uncircumcision. Now, look at verse 13. Ephesians 2.13, but now in Christ Jesus, you who sometime were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Now look at that, but now. In other words, up here on the board, there's time past, and then there's a place that he calls, but now. Now you know what you do when you move from time past to but now? You make a division. You move from the past to the present. And he says, but now you who sometime were far off are made nigh. This division between the circumcision and the uncircumcision is done away with in here. He says in verse 14, for he is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. He took that thing out of the way. So in the but now section, there's just one level. Time past, there's two levels. In the but now section, there's but one level. Now if you go back to verse number 7 in Ephesians 2, you'll see one more division. Ephesians 2, 7, that in the ages to come, He might show the exceeding riches of His grace and His kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Then there's time past, there's but now, and then there are the ages to come out here. 
Now somebody says, well, Brother Jordan, that isn't really too wonderful there. That's just, that's just time. That's time past. That's past, present, and future. But my friend, you understand, in, this, in studying the Bible dispensation, what you're studying is a timeline. And time is divided in past, present, and future. And God dealt with men one way in the past. He's dealing with them another way in the present. And then He's going to deal with them. He's going to bring those two purposes, the purpose from time past and the purpose from but now, to fruition over here in the future. So you want to understand those three divisions. You want to be able to identify them. Come back with me now to verse number 11. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verse, uh, verse 11. Wherefore remember that you being in time past, Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision, by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ. Now why were they without Christ? Being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Now, my friend, it's real clear in the passage that the basic characteristic in time past is this division, the social division between the circumcision and the uncircumcision, but more than the social and racial division is the spiritual and, and religious division that, that, that God had made there. Because when, when Jesus Christ came... They were without Christ. Now I know when circumcision began. Circumcision began in the book of Genesis in your Bible. And it goes all the way through the books, uh, book of Malachi in your Bible. And I know when the Lord Jesus Christ came, Jesus Christ came in the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So I know what I'm dealing with in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. I'm dealing with Genesis through the book of John anyway. Because in those passages back there, we're dealing with the distinction between the circumcision and the uncircumcision. And I want you to understand that. My friend, in time past back there, the hope and the ministry that people had belonged to the nation Israel. In time, this, this Genesis to Malachi, that's Israel's Bible. And he says in verse number, number 12 there that at that time you were without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise having no hope and without God in the world. God made some, these people back here some promises. He gave them his law. He gave them some covenants. And you Gentiles down here, he said you didn't have any part in that. All that stuff belonged to Israel. And when Jesus Christ came, he belonged to Israel, not you. Now I want you to see that. Come with me to Romans chapter 15. Now hang on to your seat here now because we're fixing to go over a couple of passages here that are going to revolutionize your thinking about the Word of God. They're going to revolutionize your thinking about what God's doing in His book and they're going to revolutionize your thinking about religion. You say, boy, that's a, that's a big statement, Brother Rick. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. But I tell you what, it's a fact. Romans chapter 15, verse number 8. Now look at that passage. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. What did it say was? Jesus Christ is a minister of the what? The circumcision. Didn't it say that? All right, look up here. Jesus Christ is a minister of the circumcision. Then I know something. I know the ministry of Jesus Christ fits right. And it's in the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It fits in time past. Because time past is the time when God's dealings with men were based on the distinction between the circumcision and the uncircumcision down here. And Jesus Christ, when He came, was a minister of the circumcision. The earthly ministry of Jesus Christ recorded in the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John was a ministry of Jesus Christ to the nation Israel only. Let me say that again. Well, I want to read the verse. Come over to Matthew chapter number 10. Matthew chapter number 10. Verse number 1. When he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now the names of the twelve apostles are these. And he gives you the names. Verse number 5. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles. Did you get that? Don't go to these dudes down here. 
And in any city the Samaritans enter you not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the, of the house of Israel. And as you go preach, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. They're preaching about a kingdom. God promised, we'll talk more about this next time, God promised the nation Israel a kingdom. He told them they'd have a redeemer that would come out of Zion and redeem them from the wrath of God against their sin and their, their unbelief. And he would establish their kingdom. He'd put away ungodliness from Jacob and establish them in a kingdom and give them the land that he promised to Abraham back there for an everlasting covenant. Give them the throne and the kingdom to fill the land that he promised to David back there in the promises in the Davidic covenant. And God promised that Jesus Christ is the minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promise is made unto the fathers. So when he trains his 12 apostles and he sends them out and, and gives them a commission there in Matthew 10, he says, you guys go out and you fulfill the promises. You go out and, and, and confirm the promises that God made unto the fathers back there. That's the issue. That's what's going on back there. You know something, folks? John chapter number 4, verse 22, the Lord Jesus Christ says to that woman at the well there in Samaria, He says, salvation is of the Jews. You know how many, now you listen to me, you know how many people when Jesus Christ healed a multitude of people, they came and, and He'd heal them of all these diseases. You know how many Gentiles He healed? None. <laughs> Those people were Jews. They were circumcised. You know how many Gentiles he dealt with in his earthly ministry? Only two. A woman. Gentile woman in Matthew 15 who came and submitted herself to the nation Israel. And a Gentile man servant in Luke chapter 7 who had blessed Israel. And God told these people back there, them that bless thee I'll bless, them that curse thee I'll curse, and in thee shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. And we're going to see in the future as we study this thing that if a, if a man down here on the wrong side of the middle wall of partition wanted to get a blessing, there were some gates, some go doorways that he could go through up there and get to God who's up there with Israel. But all, the only way he could get up there to God who dwelt with Israel and was Israel's God was to go through Israel. And there's not one Gentile in that Bible and Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John that ever got to the Lord Jesus Christ or ever got anything from Jesus Christ that didn't go to him through the nation Israel. Time past is the time when that distinction between the circumcision and the uncircumcision is the basis for God's dealings with man. I know something conclusively in this Bible. I know Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John fit in time past. The earthly ministry of Jesus Christ in time past was a ministry to the nation Israel. And I don't have to wonder about that. It fits in time past because the verses in the Bible fit there. Now come with me uh, to... Uh, well, let's see. Come with me to the book of Acts, chapter number 2. Book of Acts, chapter 2 in one hand. And let's go back to Ephesians 2. Acts, chapter 2. Uh, Acts, chapter number 2. And Ephesians, chapter number 2. And I, in Ephesians, chapter 2, verse number 13, it says, But now, in Christ Jesus, you who sometime were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. In order to move from time past to but now, you got to move to a place where you that were far off are made near. Well, let's see if that happened in Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, verse number 14. Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said, You men of Judea and all you that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you. Verse 22, ye men of Israel hear these words. Verse 36, therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly. Chapter 5, Acts chapter 5, verse number 30, 32. He says, uh, in Acts chapter 5, verse, make it verse 31. Him, talking about Christ, hath God raised, uh, exalted with His right hand, uh, to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance, uh, uh, a repentance to Israel and the forgiveness of sins. Acts chapter number 3, verse number 25. Peter says, Ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers. You see, when Jesus Christ died at Calvary, He died in time past. When He was resurrected, He was resurrected in time past. When He ascended into heaven, He ascended into heaven in time past. When the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost in the early Acts period, you were still in time past. There is no... And, and 
in Galatians chapter 2, verse number 7, 8, and 9, we're told that the apostle Peter was the apostle of the circumcision. It's still time past back there. You don't move from time past to but now until you come uh, over here to a man by the name of Saul of Tarsus who becomes Paul the Apostle. Jesus Christ from up here in heaven's glory reaches down and saves the Apostle Paul. Saul of Tarsus makes him the Apostle Paul. And Paul says, If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given to me, Paul, to you word, send to you, you Gentiles. He says, uh, For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God that's given me, to you would send to you. You see, Paul is the initiator of God's message to the Gentiles without Israel. How that by revelation Jesus Christ made known unto me the mystery. That thing's called a mystery. Now we want to understand that. It's a secret. It's something those people back there didn't know about. It's something the prophets didn't prophesy about, the promises didn't promise about, the covenants didn't entail. Christ in His earthly ministry didn't tell them about, Peter didn't know about it, the twelve didn't know about it. Christ, God kept it a secret until He revealed it through Paul. Something new came on the scene. Paul is that other apostle with that new message. He's not a continuation of what went before. There's something new. You know what you've done when you come to Paul? You've moved from time past to something new, but now. Romans chapter number 11, verse number 13. Now, Romans 15, 8 will clear up for you what, what the earthly ministry of Christ is about. Romans chapter 11, verse 11, will clear up what the book of Acts is about. Romans 11, 11, he says, If they stumble that they should fall, God forbid, but through their fall. There they go. Salvation has gone to the Gentiles. And if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them, the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness. I mean, God set Israel aside. They've fallen. And then Romans chapter number 11, verse 13. Look at it on the screen there. Paul says, For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the... Gentiles, I magnify my office. Look at here, folks. The Apostle Paul is the Apostle of the Gentiles. When you read Paul's epistles on a King James Bible, Romans through Philemon, you're reading books that describe what God's doing now when the, the di distinction between the circumcision and the uncircumcision has been done away with. You know where you are now? Right there. You know what God's Word to you is? to you, what God's word about you is, it's right there, Romans to Philemon. You say, well, what about the rest of the Bible? Well, come with me to Hebrews chapter number 2. Hebrews chapter 2. You see, back here in Paul's epistles, those of us that used to be cut off, we were aliens, now we're, now we're a part of the program. Now we've got the message sent to us. But if the fall of them be the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? One day God's going to put that middle wall of petition back up. And there's some books over here, Hebrews through Revelation, that are going to tell these people over here how to function in that program in light of all that new information back there that nobody knew about before Paul. Hebrews chapter number 2, verse number... Three, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard Him? Uh, God also bearing them witness with signs and wonders, with divers miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to His will. You see the gift program all fits back here with Israel and when this program comes on the scene it all dies out. But when you get over here, you're going to go back to it. What Christ talked about back over here... Hebrews is saying, this began to be spoken about back over here. We're talking about it over here now. The hope of a man in time past is right over there. Verse number 5. And under the angels hath he not put in subjection the world to come. Notice the rest of that verse. Whereof we speak. There isn't any doubt about what the book of Hebrews is about. It's about the world to come because the writer says it's about the world to come. It fits in the ages to come over here. Now look at here. We're talking about rightly dividing the word of truth. 
You see, there's a lot of things in God's program over here that are yet to be brought to, 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 uh, to pass. He's going to bring to fruition His purpose in time past in the nation Israel. John the Baptist warned Israel to flee from the wrath to come. Christ taught His disciples to pray, Thy kingdom come. The hope that they had back over here, look to that. And my friend, the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Genesis to Malachi, the Jewish Bible, circumcision, uncircumcision, that's the basis of God's dealing. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the earthly ministry of Jesus Christ to the nation Israel only. That's the only people they were to minister to. In the book of Acts, you have the message going out, and there it's to Israel first. Now the nation Israel has fallen, and salvation goes to the Gentiles through that other apostle, the ministry of the apostle Paul. So you got Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the earthly ministry of Jesus Christ in time past. you got the book of Acts, the fall of Israel, salvation going to the Gentiles. Romans to Philemon, you've got the dispensation of grace, but now right where God's working today, there are the words of Jesus Christ to you and to me today about what God's doing today in our lives. Then you have Hebrews through Revelation. One day the body of Christ is going to be caught out, the dispensation of grace will be over with, and we'll move from the now into the future, and when we get there, then you're going to have scripture passages over here that will be doctrine for those people, just like these books are doctrine for us. Listen, those people are going to need part of the Word of God to be doctrine to them and about them just like you and I need ours. You want to rightly divide the book, folks. Don't go to mixing the thing up and cause confusion. Don't, don't make the Word of God a burden and a hassle in your life by going back here and trying to claim something and, uh, that, that God never promised you. You've never been big enough. I'll never be big enough a day of my life to make God do something He isn't doing. The key to the Christian life is find out what God is doing. And not try to take something he used to do and promise to do for somebody else and try to claim it and make out like he's doing it for us and then get all, all tore up when he doesn't do it. Folks, find out what God is doing because what God is doing today will work mightily in you that believe. Well, it's certainly good to have you tuned in and listening and studying with us. Until next time, Maranatha. Thank you, Brother Jordan, for that message from the Word of God. Friends, we have a cassette tape that we would like you to have to go along with today's study. The tape is entitled, A Threefold Division. It's yours free of charge. It's our way of saying thanks for listening. We'll be happy to see that you receive your free copy, along with a free subscription to our monthly Bible study, The Grace Journal, if you simply write us here at The Message of Grace. The address should be on your screen. That's The Message of Grace, Box 97, Bloomingdale, Illinois, 60108. If you prefer, you can also call us during normal business hours at area code 708-529-0520. Request tape offer number 146. That's tape offer number 146. The Message of Grace is a ministry of Grace School of the Bible, and we're glad you've been with us today. If our study together has been a help to you, we would be happy to put you in touch with a Bible study in this area where the message of God's wonderful grace is proclaimed from the rightly divided word. And friend, if you're still not sure of salvation, that your sins are forgiven, and that you have eternal life as a present possession, let us know, and we'll be happy to send you some gospel literature that will show you the way. That address again is the Message of Grace, Box 97, Bloomingdale, Illinois, 60108. Thanks for being with us today, and God's best until we meet next time for another Message of Grace.